Welcome back students to our Chemistry 1510 video notes. In this section, we're gonna talk about the mole, molar mass, and very simple mole conversions. So before watching this, you've already watched Tyler DeWitt's introduction to the mole because his is in a lot more detail. It's very hard to understand what a mole is because it's such an untangible or I guess intangible number. So you've seen him say something like 603 hexa Hex trillion is that what he says? I can't recall at the moment. Um, and that's really uh, usually communicated as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I'm just adding another significant figure here with the second two. Uh, atoms, molecules, particles will say things in one mole. So then when I ask how many atoms are in one mole of zinc, you're going to say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. If I say how many atoms are in a mole of aluminum, you'd say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. If I said how many marshmallows are in a mole of marshmallows, completely unrealistic, but you'd still say 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. In if you change from atoms to something different, like molecules, how many molecules are there in a mole of water? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So one of the most important things is calculating or figuring out molar mass. The molar mass is the amount of grams that goes that lives in one mole of compound. So when you measure out 6.022 or count out times 10 to the 23rd atoms, then the mass that that number of atoms is equivalent to is its molar mass. On the periodic table, if we look at something like copper, the molar mass is going to be listed down here. So uh, you're going to look at your periodic table. You're going to find the molar mass of copper. The periodic table I'm using has 63.55 grams per mole as the molar mass of copper. Hydrogen gas is going to be a little bit different because in a prior video we learned that hydrogen is one of our diatomic elements. And because hydrogen is diatomic, you can't just use the 1.01 that's on the periodic table. You have to account for the fact that there are two hydrogens present. So you'll take that 1.01 on the periodic table, you'll multiply it by 2 to get 2.02 grams per mole. So figuring out what the molar mass is is really important. So we're gonna do it for a bigger chemical formula now. So let's look at sodium phosphate. So in order to figure out the molar mass for sodium phosphate, you first need the correct formula for sodium phosphate. So this is like a little nomenclature problem. Remember that sodium has a plus one charge, phosphate is PO43 minus, so you need three sodiums to cancel out the three minus on the phosphate. So that's your correct formula. Now I'm gonna over show my work here in this calculation to show all of the steps. This is by no means the amount of work that you would have to uh, be expected to um, write down at any point. So I'm going to look up the atoms of each type on the periodic table and figure out what their mass is. Then I'm going to multiply that mass by the number of atoms. So I'm going to look up sodium. My periodic table says sodium has a mass of 22.99. Yours might say 23, and that's perfectly fine. And we have three sodiums. My periodic table says phosphorus is 30.97. And we have one of them. The oxygen is 16.00. Your periodic table might say 15.99. Again, that's fine. And that we have four of them. So you would go through and calculate that and then add all of them up and you should get something like 163.94. Now, if you are getting 163.93 or 163.95, that's fine. There's nothing to be concerned about there. There's going to be some discrepancy based upon the periodic table you're using. If you're getting 166, 
that's a that might be a problem. So just um, make sure that you're not switching around numbers and no matter what periodic table you use, you should be fine. So we have to be able to calculate the molar mass. Now, before we start looking at some other things that we're going to do, let me just really quick give you one more example. And I'm not gonna do a full one, I'm just gonna do a partial one where um, let's do maybe like barium nitrate. So what I wanna do with barium nitrate is just list out each of the number of atoms that are present to make sure that you've seen an example with the parentheses. So you've got one barium, obviously, and then this two multiplies through to each of your atoms inside the parentheses. Remember there's a little like invisible one right there, so it's almost like you're in math class and you're distributing. So you're two times one and you're two times three. So you have two nitrogens and you have six oxygens, right? So we multiply here. I've got too many arrows going on. I'm gonna erase those. I'm gonna keep my distribution, my distribution arrows. So just make sure that you know that you're multiplying those, all right, instead of adding them, because that's a common misconception. All right, let's use molar mass as a conversion factor. So we just figured out how to calculate molar mass, and now we're gonna use it. So molar mass always has a unit of grams per mole, and we can use it in the process of dimensional analysis. So right here is a question. Convert 4.60 grams of sodium carbonate to moles of sodium carbonate. Well, before we can even do this, we really need to know the chemical formula of sodium carbonate. Remember, sodium is Na+. Carbonate's one of your polyatomic ions, CO3, 2 minus. So you need two sodiums to cancel out the charge on carbonate. So now take a moment and calculate the molar mass by finding the mass of each element and multiplying by the number of atoms present. So you'd find your mass of sodium, multiply by two, find your mass of carbon, add that in, find your mass of oxygen, multiply by that by three, and then add all of that together. So I got 105.99, oops, that looks like a G, grams per mole. So as you do this, Again, if yours is a little bit less or a little bit more, it's going to be fine. So I'm going to show you the two different ways that this molar mass can be written as a conversion factor. So if we look at the molar mass, it has a unit that has a division sign in it. Right? That's what that per is. So we can write this as 105.99 grams of sodium carbonate in one mole of sodium carbonate, or we can write a different conversion factor that flips this around. So we could have the one mole on top. Oh, I just abbreviated mole. See how there's no E there? That's the abbreviation for mole. Isn't that silly? You drop one letter and it's an abbreviation. And when students are like, but why, that's dumb. Um, yeah, I know, but lowercase m sometimes means mass, but most of the time means molality. Um, M-O means molecular orbital theory, so M-O-L is as good as it gets. All right, so then we'll put the 105.99 grams on the bottom. So you'll see I'm doing a little bit of extra work here, and I'm putting the chemical um, formula and that's for the future, because when we get to a little bit later in this chapter, and then also chapter four, having those is going to be really helpful to keep track of things. Otherwise, you're going to get super lost. So um, make sure that you're in the practice of writing down the, uh, let's change my highlighter, the number and the unit, and then also the chemical formula, right? So it's always number, unit, formula. So we have our two ways that we can use to or set up our molar mass. Now the question is, which way are we going to use? 
So let's do a calculation. We're starting with the 4.60 grams of sodium carbonate that was in the initial question from up here. And we want to go from grams to moles. So we're starting with grams and we're going to pick one of these and we're going to put it here. And we need to choose the one that cancels the units. So if we have grams on top of this first um, term, we need grams on the bottom of the second term in order for them to cancel. And then we'll put the moles on top. So we're using this conversion factor. So when we put this in our calculator, what you're going to do is you're going to put in 4.60 divided by 105.99 and then hit the equal sign. Uh, and then you're done, right? You should get something like 0 0.0434 moles of sodium carbonate. Keep in mind that here I have three significant figures. Here I have five significant figures, so three will limit us. A lot of times at this point, students will ask something like, well, don't you only have one significant figure here with the number one? And the answer to that is no. That's one is considered an infinite number of significant figures when you're talking about one mole of something. So the bottom part here is the measured part of that term. And so the 105.99 with five significant figures is the number of significant figures for that term. So we've got one more. Why don't you see if you can pause and give this one a try on your own and then come back and solve. All right, so we're back after pausing. What you did in this problem was a couple of things. First of all, you figured out the chemical formula for potassium phosphate. After that, you figured out the molar mass for potassium phosphate. Remember the molar mass can be set up in one of two ways where the grams is on the top or the grams is on the bottom. In this case, because you started with moles in your beginning term, you want to have moles on the bottom of the next term so that these cancel out. So now you have grams up here and that's the unit that's remaining and it's the unit that you want. So I wrote down for my answer what my calculator gave me, which is an outrageous number of significant figures. So for this particular problem, I have only two significant figures here to start with. And then I have five here. So I need two sig figs here at the end. So now I'm going to round this to two significant figures. So when I round this to two significant figures, you might have chosen, this is grams by the way, of K3PO4, you might have chosen to round this to 1,300 grams of K3PO4, but you could have also just written 1.3 kilograms of K3PO4. Whichever one you want to do is perfectly appropriate. So that's probably enough for one video. Let's pause here. Um, we'll wrap this one up and I'll finish the rest of uh, this note packet in another video. As always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.